If you shoot vlogs with your Hero 11 and you want to get pro looking footage, there are five really simple things that you can do. The first thing that you can do is use the auto exposure lock. Despite what I've said in previous videos of mine, you don't have to shoot with manual camera settings. You can use auto exposure and actually auto exposure is going to be awesome when you just want to get footage really quickly. You don't want to have to keep changing your camera settings and switching out ND filters. So auto exposure is absolutely fine. But in order to stop the footage from fluctuating in exposure, so if you're filming part of the scene and then you move and then it changes the exposure, exposure. Using the auto exposure lock is going to maintain your exposure across the scene. So the way to enable auto exposure lock is by tapping on the screen and holding the screen and then you'll have this spot meter that comes up and then in the scene whatever you want to expose for whether it's the sky or the foreground if you drag that box to that area the Hero 11 will expose the scene accordingly and then if you tap in the box it'll place a lock icon in there which means that your exposure is locked in and then you just need to hit the tick in the bottom right corner and then you're good to go to start shooting. So the reason why auto exposure lock is so handy is if you were shooting a reveal, for example, you had the camera behind a tree, for example, and then you wanted to reveal the scene out in front of the tree, then what would normally happen if you didn't have auto exposure lock on is the GoPro would expose for the tree. So it'd try and make the tree bright and then what's in the foreground would then be overexposed. And so what it's gonna do with the auto exposure lock, if you expose for the scene and then you bring the camera back behind the tree, then the tree's gonna be dark, but then as you move the camera out from behind the tree, then the scene in front of you is gonna be correctly exposed. And that's kind of what you want. So with that in mind, the next tip comes down to framing, movement and angles. What typically happens a lot of the time is most people will just think about filming everything from chest level because that's kind of a natural way to do things. So to mix things up a bit, think about getting shots where you can slide along the ground. Think about getting shots like previously what I said, using reveals to reveal a scene. So starting behind something and then revealing the scene out in front of you shooting shots higher up so just looking up above you you can get some really great footage which just makes your b-roll sequences a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more engaging and then also with your movement just making your movement quite slow so not whipping around with the camera and doing lots of quick pans because it just gives the viewer time to process what they're actually seeing and it just makes the footage look a little bit more cinematic So when you're filming those really slow shots where you're not panning really quickly and you're trying to get really controlled shots, even though the Hero 11 has really good stabilization, there are going to be times where you might introduce little jitters and little shakes. And this is kind of normal because it's a really light camera, so you haven't got the weight of the camera to kind of steady your hands. So the way to get around that is by shooting at a higher frame rate. So if you're shooting 25 FPS, then you could shoot in 50 FPS instead, and then you could slow it down to 25 FPS, and then you'll have really smooth smooth motion or really smooth footage but if you don't want to have slow motion in the sense that people are walking around in your scene and you don't want them to be slow then there's not a huge amount that you can do about it but if you're shooting nature scenes where it's just the trees and the branches and flowers and bushes and that kind of thing then slowing the footage down looks really nice and controlled and it's a really good way to just get smoother footage. So tip number three comes down to focus and as you know, action cameras have fixed focus. So usually the minimum focusing distance is 30 centimeters, which can be used to your advantage. So one of the things that you obviously have to remember is that you have that 30 centimeter minimum focusing distance. So if you're trying to get something up close and have it in focus, then you need to make sure that you're maintaining that 30 centimeters. But if you wanna have a bit more of a creative shot, and you're doing kind of like a sliding shot or anything like that, then you can use things that are in the foreground to create a bit of a blur 
and then have what's further out in the scene in focus. So again, this works really well if you're doing any kind of reveal or sliding shots because you've just got that extra dimension. So particularly with slider shots, if you can put something in the foreground, which is gonna be blurry, then it makes the movement look like there's more to it rather than it just being almost like a two dimensional sliding shot. So when you put your B-roll sequences together, they're just gonna look a little bit more interesting. And when you want music for your B-roll sequences, Track Club is the place to go. They have a highly curated library of high quality music. And they've got an awesome feature called Mix Lab, which allows you to customize tracks before you download them. So if you wanna remove certain instruments from a track that you found that you like, but something just doesn't sound quite right, then you can either mute that instrument or just turn the volume down a little bit. You can isolate certain instruments as well. You can also change the beats per minute. So if the track feels a little bit too fast or a little bit too slow for what you're looking for, then you can and speed it up or slow it down. And when you find a track that you really like, if you wanna kind of carry on that same theme throughout your video, then you can look for similar tracks to the one that you've just found. So it really is an awesome music site. I've dropped a link in the description where you can get a one month full access free trial. So it's definitely worth checking out. And thanks Track Club for sponsoring this video. So when it comes to tip number four, even though the Hero 11 has awesome stabilization, using a gimbal is going to give you the ability to have more creative shots, but also use ND filters and also film when it's low light and still get stable footage. One of the things that electronic stabilization isn't great for is slower shutter speeds. And in low light, your shutter speed drops significantly to compensate for the loss in light. And so your stabilization is just going to be all shaky and wobbly and the footage is just not going to look very good. So using a gimbal is going to completely completely eliminate that. And if you want to shoot with ND filters because you want more natural motion blur in your videos, then you're also going to need a gimbal because you're dropping your shutter speed down to, let's say, 1 50th of a second if you're shooting in a frame rate of 25 FPS. And so that's a slow shutter speed. And again, the image stabilization isn't going to work very well. But when it comes to the creative side of using a gimbal, this is where you can get some really interesting shots, especially if you use an extension pole, and then you can get jib-like shots. These are especially great if you want to get sweeping shots or really high shots and you don't have a drone and also if you're filming somewhere where you can't actually fly a drone so the gimbal is just going to give you that extra movement with the camera that you wouldn't get if it was just on a pole by itself So when it comes to tip number five, this is mainly to do with your camera settings, but more so to do with the color profile that you use. So shooting in vibrant, I find is really saturated and it doesn't look natural and you just really get that GoPro look that everyone knows it's a GoPro shot on a GoPro. Whereas if you shoot with natural, you kind of still get it a little bit, but it's not quite as much. But if you shoot flat and then you color correct and color grade the footage, then you can get some really nice looking footage from the GoPro. What I tend to do is shoot flat I set my sharpness to low and then I color correct and color grade by footage with film convert nitrate and I've dropped a link in the description to that. But it just means that you can get a really nice look to your footage and you can create clips that look like this. One thing that I forgot to mention though is setting your white balance manually. If you shoot during the day, you wanna set it to daylight, which is usually around 5,500 Kelvin, just because if you have it on auto, then as your scene changes or as you move the camera around your scene, then the white balance is gonna start shifting. And then when you try and color grade the footage, it's just gonna be a nightmare. So set it manually and then you're gonna have no problems. So if you found those tips useful, do give the video a like for me because it helps out the channel. And if you wanna check out Track Club, I've dropped a link in the description. And don't forget that you can get a one month full access free trial so thanks for watching if you have any questions drop them in the comments but i'll catch you guys on the next video